books from China. Yep. Andy finally convinced me. I broke down. I did it. I said, no, oh, I don't like those things. This is a 3D printer. I messed around with them about a decade ago, and I did not, um, I, you know, I did a few things for the boat with it, but, you know, most of the time I just like getting out of aluminum. But this one, the quality has come up a lot. The uh, price has come down a lot. And, uh, yeah, so at this stage, I think it'll work out nicely for us. Dry. Well, the box is a hell of a lot drier than I am. It's kind of rough out. Before this showed up, I was going to do some carpentry today, but it's a little too bumpy out there to be running saws, so this is today's activity. i at home down in the engine room for it, but for now, I think the dining table is the perfect spot. Oh, isn't that pretty? The quick start guy is just all you need to set it up, and it's booting up now. Power switch is in the back. I'm not crazy about that. But everything else looks fine. It's even got a light inside. How about that? All right, here we go. English. Removed all the ties. Wow, it's even got the uh, documentation here. Yeah, I did that too. And they give you a little bit of filament to get started with, but uh, you might want to buy a roll of this. I'll put uh, links in the uh, description for the filament I got. All right, just wants me to push the filament in. Waiting for temperature. Now this is why this thing has a cabinet. It will actually heat up inside and that makes it um, much better for printing ASA. And even PLA, because I used to have problems with my pieces, they'd curl up off the print table. Of course, I didn't have any kind of a heated chamber like this comes with. This is much better. One of the steps of setup is input shaping and I didn't know what that was, but I went ahead and did it. I gotta warn you about input shaping. It's a fascinating deal actually, the head moves at a very high speed and it has some pretty good heft to it so it'll sit here and vibrate itself back and forth into different speeds and you can hear it building up it sounds like it's going to fly apart after a while i think what it's doing is it's finding the bad resonance spots and learning how to compensate for them by stopping in a weird way so it can move quickly but stop without overshooting or undershooting but don't think your prayer is going to really blow itself apart it's just a fascinating step of the process Oh, how nice. You can hook it up to your Wi-Fi. So no moving the files around on a memory stick. Comes preloaded with a little sample boat to print, so we'll try that. <laughs> that is significantly faster than uh, my printer 10 years ago. Now that's PLA. The ASA is a lot slower. I like it. And here's some samples that Andy printed for me. These are uh, bulkhead fittings for uh, a water tank down below. And I asked him to do this because they're threaded. Because I wanted to know if he could print threads with it. And sure enough, he can. It's threaded, it works fine. And it's even got threads tapped into it where you need the fine detail of a, a national pipe thread fitting. So yeah, and look at this. He even printed the tool that will help install it inside the tank. You can't reach inside there without that. And you can print flexible, flexible filament. And the detail has definitely come up in the last decade. So yeah, I'm happy to have it. A QIDI tech. Cutie. And it's arrived just in time because I'm still in the mode of getting everything to stay put where I put it on the boat. And so this is going to be printing some brackets and holders for boat hooks and things like that. And for the manuals and all that, it's all online. And so I got a lot of learning to do there, but no need for me to repeat it all for you. Select your printer that you have. They even have videos out here that'll take you through all the steps of unboxing it and setting it up. So my job here is to show you what it can do for me in this boat. Maybe you'll decide that you need one for your house, farm, whatever you have. For me, the next step is connect printer via Wi-Fi. And I bet its IP number is right underneath network. Yep, right there. Hey, it looks like it uses a number of slicer programs. One of them is QD Slicer. I need to download that probably. That's probably where I put that IP number. What Slicer does is it takes your 3D object and it turns it into G-code that the printer will use. Yeah, software. Installation. Software installation. So you can get it from Google or GitHub. I trust GitHub. There's the latest. Windows 64 setup. That's downloaded. We'll run that. That is quick. Run it now. Select standard printers. Uh, let's go for simple mode. Hmm. Add physical printer. Cool. It's actually walking me through the steps here. Okay, I had to restart the uh, printer and then the connection works fine. It didn't work on the IP address that the uh, 
DHCP server gave it the first time so so I did it again there it is that one works now we should be able to go to device and yeah hey look at that it's got a camera that's the inside of the box <laughs> that's kind of sweet and there's a bunch of other stuff here I gotta look at now and that's all very interesting but I probably need to go up here to uh, guide yeah here's where we'll spend some time okay so according to this I go to platter and then file import STL see I don't want Imperial I'm sure it's in metric I just downloaded a pool brush hanger off of uh, oh, Thingiverse which is like a database of things yeah so I can put hopefully a boat hook in there now this Thingiverse website is like a database of all things you can print in most 3D printers so it's a good place to go and get something that's common so you can download things from here, you can print them as R, you can put them into your CAD software and you can tweak them. But the real power comes in to being able to customize something in your CAD software that's just specifically for what you're using it for. That's where the power of these printers comes in. If it's just, you know, a plastic hanger, I, I wouldn't be buying a 3D printer. I'd just, you know, order it off Amazon. They have them. They'd be fine. But this one, if the hook isn't just right for my boat hooks, then I can change that bracket a little bit, make it perfect. Or I could draw it from scratch. This time, let's just go the easy route. Thingiverse. So it prints 250 millimeters. That's about 9 inches. So there ought to be a way of measuring this. But it looks about the right size. Let's just try it. And this is cool. You can change the end fill, which is basically how much material is inside the shape. So you could make it a solid object if you wanted to. We're going to leave it at 15% because... This one's not going to get used anyway. Slice now. Maybe that's it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look here. It's giving me some help here. It says you've got some overhangs here that you might want to use uh, some supports for. So let's see. Supports. Uh, support. Support enforcers only. Let's try that. Let's print it like that and see what it does. Slice now. Slicing. Oh, look at this. Send to printer. Wow. Let's try it. Send to printer. There it is. Upload. Upload and print. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. Upload and print. Oh my goodness. Look at that. And I seriously doubt I have enough filament for this. The one of the features of this printer is it will stop when it runs out of filament and you can add more filament and it'll start going again. My old one, it didn't do that. So we're just waiting for it to warm up. And look at that. It's back there cleaning the tip. My old one didn't do that either. I had to do that. It's off to the races. Yeah, definitely not going to make it. And you can see what the infill is about. It's leaving voids in there. So you could just increase the infill percentage and it'd be a heavier part. Denser, thicker, more solid. And yeah, that messy part is putting on there is the support structure for the next layer, which is, you know, it's wider, so it has an overhang, so that support structure supports it. And there it is on camera. That would be nice. I could just let it run down in the engine room and then watch it from up here. It's not noisy, doesn't have any smell to it, but it sure shakes my table a lot. My computer screen here is wiggling back and forth. It'll have a much stronger table down in the engine room. I, I definitely wouldn't try setting one up on a folding table. And down here on the bottom, it'll tell you it's been running for 28 minutes. It's going to take 33 minutes to get the whole thing done. But it's going to run out of filament here in a little bit. I'm starting to wonder if it's run out and it just doesn't know it. This is cool too. You can hit pause. It'll take a break and let you see the part so you can get a good look at it. Come back, hit resume. And you got the same thing here. Once it decides the temperatures are right and everything, it'll clean the tip and go back to work. Well, this year out of filament thing is definitely not working because it still thinks it's printing, so we'll have to figure that out. Let's see, stop printing, yes. This is neat too, it's a piece of metal in here, magnetically attached, so put it in, comes right off. All right, so that leaves the support structure to be torn away. I don't think that'd be too much of a problem. You know what would probably be better is just make the thing rounded here and then it wouldn't need the support structure and it'd be stronger after all. And there's my boat hook and this thing's just not as beefy as I'd like it to be and it's too big a hook, so we'll make some changes to it. But my first impression is that it's gonna be one hell of an asset to seeker. I'm glad to have it. You know, most things on a boat just have to be stouter than most things on land because it gets a little rough, even in the bay. So I'm going to shoot an email off to support and ask them about that filament sensor. And we'll see what kind of help we get. Well, a little YouTube search says the extruder 
has the sensor for the uh, filament right here in the top of it. Oh yeah, I can tell that is not the way it's supposed to look. This little roller here is supposed to be over. Yeah, it snapped over just then. Yeah, that's an easy fix. I can make it stick, but I gotta push it all the way back to do it. So, yeah, we'll take care of that. We'll watch it. And we'll still look at to see how long it takes for a reply to the email. Not bad at all. Six hours later, they said, hey, check to make sure that sensor is moving freely. And that's a reply at 12.11 a.m. I call that good. Well, good morning. I give QD Support top marks because I explained what I did with that little sensor with the screwdriver and how it was acting. And they wrote back three hours later explaining that that bolt right there, right next to the sensor, should be loosened up some. And that'll probably let it slide back and forth better. And, and I imagine that's all that needs to be done. So we'll take care of that. Oh, look at that. It's so loose, it's about to fall out. I think somebody's already done that. Yeah. No, it's just really sticky. I think I'll just remove the whole sensor. Maybe a stronger spring would be better. Well, one screw came out, but this other one, the head stripped out inside. I'll try a pair of pliers on it. The pliers worked. I took that screw all the way out, and there's another one down here that I backed off. Now we should be able to slide this back. Yeah, there's the spring right there. Yeah, as I push on it, I push on the wires. Okay, I forgot how to get the wires around there. Oh, they're just clipped in there. There we go. It should be free. Yeah, it's free. Okay. It's got a little bit of grit on there. That's probably not helping. And the other thing we can do is we can take this spring out and stretch it a little bit. Just ever so slightly. And they don't seem to have any lubricant in there, but there was a little piece of grit. Maybe that was the whole problem. All right, keep the same orientation. Slide it back in. So there's the spring sticking out, and I think this screw here is what retains that spring. So I'm going to use a fuse they happen to give us to push that spring in. Yeah. And then I'll put the screw in. All right, fine. Doesn't matter how far I push it back, it doesn't lock up. And all back together. I think we got it. Well, good old Andrew Dot McDonald Dot on YouTube has a printer like this, and uh, he has the PLA, so I don't gotta wait for mine to show up on order. And he also gave me some advice on making that part a lot stronger. Under Slicer, you can go Simple, Advanced, and Expert. Simple would do for us, because what I've done here is I've changed the bottom shell, the horizontal shell, to five millimeters thick, and the vertical shells, I changed them to uh, eight layers, and it gives you the calculation. So that'd be close to about four millimeters. It's a hook, and I want most of the strength in the sidewall of that hook. So that should do it. And then we're gonna do an infill of 50%. So we switch back from print settings to platter, and uh, then select infill 50%. That should be a tough part, let's see. And this is a 3D part I drew up in Bobcad and then exported it as STL, brought it over here, and it's got a little artifact in it, but that uh, goes away when you actually hit the uh, slice now, and it's gone. So it figured it out that that's actually not part of my part. Good on it. Yeah, that looks fine. I even have holes drilled through this thing. So we'll see how it does on that too. Okay, send to printer. Upload and print. Well, it didn't get rid of it. There's my artifact. Showed back up on this side. So let's see what it does with it. Yeah, it's gonna do its registration thing here for a while. It seems to be doing the job. It's laying down a thick base. Well, that answers that question. It displays that little glitch, but it doesn't print it, so it's not a glitch. Well, there you can see what a 50% infill looks like. That's going to be strong. And look, it's uh, even automatically made it solid where the uh, holes are going to go through for the screws. So, yeah, it's all easy to do. I like it. You know, I'm sure there's lots of tweaks and things that can uh, improve on this, but, uh, you know, my first part and putting it into here and not that much work, yeah. I am impressed. It's out of the oven, five and a half hours to print, something like that, and man, does it feel sturdy. The bottom has a little bit of roughness in it where the radius was, you know, it had to print, it has to come up and actually extend out. I didn't use any structures on it to support that. You know, I guess I could use a, a, a tighter radius and it would uh, even do that better, but I'm happy with that. It's, it's, it's gonna get abused like everything else. Let's try it out. So these are going to get mounted up there, but this is my large boat hook that's going to... Oh, that is nice fit. It doesn't rattle in there at all. Easy in, easy out. This is my smaller one. Yeah. 
That is the power. Custom designing something, custom fit to what you need it for exactly. And the strength of it. You know, that's what I was after. Most 3D printed parts, I see people just, you know, they're printing something for their needs, which is just kind of flimsy, but this, I like. So having CAD and a 3D printer, those are the two skill sets that are fantastic. And I don't think the 3D printer is much of a skill set. This is just too easy to use. And the CAD works not that bad. I'm using a Bob CAD Cam. It's the same software I use for my CNC mill and lathe and the other things on the boat. So I started out with this drawing and I drew it so that it had the right dimensions for my boat hooks in it. And then I created everything inside this outside line as a surface. Then I extruded that surface out of the plane so it becomes a 3D object. Then I just had a fillet added to the edges that were going to be exposed and that gives it that soft roundness. Next time I'll use a smaller fillet, I think it'll even do a better job. And if I have any problems with the PLA, I don't think I will because it's in the shade on both locations. But if I do, I can always just switch to a ABS plastic, which would be better out in the sunlight. I already have the part designed, so just tell the printer to go, but that it's using ABS instead of PLA. ABS is also ASA. It's not a bad learning curve is the nice thing about these printers. You, you'll pick the printer up pretty quick and you can see that the CAD work isn't that tough either. You just got to invest some time in learning that. Hope you do. So yes, the Kitty Tech printer is going to get a place in my boat. It's just not going to be on my dining room table anymore. Now the only thing I'd change about this is its name. I hear people on YouTube calling it Cheaty. I don't know how you get Cheaty out of that. Let's call it Cutie. Welcome home. Check this out. It's got a memory and it keeps the parts that you've printed. That's my part. So I can just select that. It tells me it's going to take 5 hours and 12 minutes. I'm going to use 78.5 meters of filament. And it's PLA is what I need in there. So let's just press go. Just open up the cover for PLA. Alright, we'll do that. It's not warm today, but get your request. All I did is I tapped the pilot house for a number 10 32 screw. And I want them this dirty because I can just see somebody reaching up here grabbing the boat hook and holding on. Nice. Yes. I like it. Doing some quick accounting, a spool of PLA is about uh, $14. It has about 330 meters of filament on it. I use about 80 meters to make one of those parts. That comes to $3.40. So $6.80 for the pair of them. That's not bad at all. Typical boat hook hangers on Amazon run anywhere from $9 to you know, $20 for one boat hook. So it's great when you get something custom for the less than the cost of something off the shelf. Now for the same kind of thing on the back deck for those boat hooks. So they're just standing up in the corners too. That's almost like Star Trek, isn't it? And you can design them with the bolt holes and screw holes in them already. That's a part. And that's just PLA uh, filament there. I'm happy with it. You know, if you put enough material in it, you can get strong parts, even with 3D printers. <laughs> just love it. We're gonna be seeing a lot more parts printed off that 3D printer, Q1. And they're on sale right now, 130 bucks off. And if you use our affiliate link, you'll kick some of that back to us, and we appreciate that. It's the links in the description. They're normally $600. Don't know when they're gonna go back to $600. They're a brand new release thing, so I think they're probably gonna go up pretty soon because this printer's gonna catch on. It's fast, it's easy to use. You know, you need those CAD skills though, so if you got the basic CAD skills, I would recommend one highly for most any shop. 
And speaking of shops, I hope you've been on yours creating something fantastic, useful, artistic, beautiful, whatever it is, guys. Get out there and do it. Oh, and send us a picture when you're done. Send it to svseeker at ymail.com. We'll put it on the end of our video because you can be inspirational.